Hello back again. Today we have the finals of the Citadel 1 vs. 1 tournament. Phyllis vs. Valis. Um, sadly, the second half final I couldn't cast because there was some patch between that and I can't get the replay back. But we have the first round on Lipani with Mongols vs. Holy Roman Empire. Well, it's just one more the Empire. Um, house in the wrong position, like I always. You want the uh, Aachen Chapel here, so you want, in fact, the house more like here on this side. Or if maybe even here, because. Eh, also, this house is okay. Also, it's, it's an okay house. It's. The TC range, but also the mine should be a little bit more on the left. So it's full in TC range. And yeah, that's a good start for Mongols. Normal on wood. And yeah, I think this will be a Aachen Chapel around here. Gives you wood line, gives you the sheep, and gives you the gold. We have two scout, uh, one scout versus uh, one Khan, so no second scouts for both of them. See it white. That's a good amount of sheep, 8 sheep, 9 sheep. Oh, second scout for Valis too, nice. Okay, that's a second scout. The numbers are a little bit on the left, okay. That's a lot of sheep for Valis. That's 9 sheep here, uh, 10 sheep here, and yeah, another 4, that's 14 sheep. So Mongols will have to go on deer soon or have to build a pasture. At the moment it looks like a normal tower push. Ha. And Veles didn't go for barracks. Especially as HRE, you can start just a barracks versus Mongols and you win. This is if you scout the tower wash. But. Oh. So he does the Aachen Chapel here because he knows. That's interesting. He knew he would, will get tower wash, so he puts the Aachen Chapel here. So he gets berries and the wood line. And the tower in fact doesn't cover the wood line, what's really good for Valis. Um Valis is in feudal age. Um so he can go for second TC. And that's why I think the uh, yeah. If the mining camp would be here, it actually couldn't be attacked by the... Ah, maybe it could be attacked by the spearmen. So he's not heavy on wood and food, and that's an archery range. That's a, uh, yeah. He only could have built, produced one minute arm. So that's a. He goes for the second TC. I think that's the right play. Don't think he's got this villager. 
and that's yeah, the sauce you can't attack really. Phil is still no. Where's his card? Oh, I want to on the map to scout after sheep, it looks like. And that's the silver tree up. Spears survive from Valid, uh, Phyllis. That's nice, and Phyllis has now the silver tree. Boobies, <laughs> and I think, yeah, that's a stable for the horseman tech. of the server to yeah. so that's two traders that's such good landmark and here yeah, the archers run to the market and he trades with his market that's the right choice I quite like that he trades with this market um in theory, I would always advise to trade with the enemy market as Mongols in the beginning because if the enemy knows you go silver tree, they automatically will send units down here and you just can get full trades back. And this tower also blocks the way up here and you. Also, see, uh, he should see around this area so he sees when units move out this way. Also, he sees when they move here. They also see, I think, well, it could move back here and around here, down top here. Aber, yeah. Well, it's also text for horsemen. I think that's a mistake. Um, I think well is the two mistakes this game. First mistake was you didn't mine enough gold. I think you should mine um, 100 more gold if you can. So put in the early game one more villager on gold. This is Mongols. If you go, if you ignore the tower watch, so you can get rams, uh, rams up. Ah, this one villager dead. And second villager dead. Yeah. And more idle time. These spearmen are so good. Oh, he finally found the trader. <coughs> and he got the first trader. And he gets the second trader. Phyllis doesn't build his own units at the moment. Um, okay. This is not act, uh, as he wants. Uh, this is unwanted from Phyllis. Um, yeah, they should work. Now they work again. And now we are to see HOE with five villagers less on HOE. Right, 
is just actually huge. Oh yeah, and Phyllis can double produce villagers as well. I think he does that. Because I don't see him double produce any units, so he probably double produces villagers. To be fair, he could put double produce them a lot more because he has the resources for that. <coughs> oh, he just gets the uh, outpost upgrades, that could also be the case. Oh, he has two horsemen. We waited a little bit, but not too much. Nice microphone, Venice. One trader for a horseman, that's okay. Sadly, he can catch the units with the spearman. If he had an outpost and not silver tree or the, the other landmark, he actually, in fact, could have gotten. I think he might have gotten the horseman with extra speed, but I'm not sure. I quite like this tower. And it's arrow slits. And it's the next trader. Well, it's now took his lead with villagers, so he should have a lot better eco. And as we can see, so on double the food, four times the wood, and less gold, of course. To be fair. Contesting Mongol gold will be really hard because the step read out now out, he gets 50% more gold. Does he think to down? Does he move the gear? Yes, he moves the gear. Of course, he does that. No gem network still. To be fair, he plays mostly cavalry, so that's fine. That's horseman battle. No focus fire from Phyllis, so well, it's will win this fight. But the spearman will survive soon. Also, Springhead emplacement would be really useful at the moment. Phyllis has now the big problem, he is running out of food. And on this map, the next food is the deer here. To be fair, with the tower it's more or less safe, but that's quite a lot of walking distance. And... Oh, now we have the prayer tent, that's quite late. Um, rest HRE, you probably need uh, should need the prayer tent as soon as you hit the uh, castle edge to steal the relics. To be fair, he still has a lot of control over the relics, but let's see how that goes. As I see at the moment, Phil is taking one relic, maybe two. Best case. To be fair, two relics still count as four relics, so. Um, oh yeah, also Lancers, and he can't really deal with them. And he gets his swing and placement. I was quite like that he's still on stone. I think that's a little bit too much villagers on stone, but I think it's fine. And yeah, they still get relatively good damage. Also, Phyllis stays relatively close in villagers and he has traders up, so. 
not much traders but a few traders and that already gives him a lot more income especially with the gold he has and he has a market to trade so he should be at the moment in her head and will uh, in resources and Veles gets his, uh, got his farm eco slowly going has absolutely no eco upgrades well it's the same and gets Magudai and Magudai are probably the best units in the game versus HOE because HOE has absolutely no counter to it besides archers and yeah you still can just run away when, run away with Magudai um, yeah the two knights chasing the Lancer, they never will catch him because they're exactly too, uh, as fast. And yeah. So, okay, he has still food here, that's quite nice. And still food here. This deer is not really contestable at the moment. Six damage. Fresh shot. And yeah. Still no relics taken from Velis. That's quite hard for him. So yeah, it will be one relic for versus four. Where's the fourth relic? Also oh, traders gets going. Oh, here's the fourth relic. Um, here an outpost and here an outpost would quite be good for the extra uh, YAM network speed hour for the trader. Is 50% even more. Oh, YAM network on traders and cavalry works always. Um, only on infantry villagers in the west you need the YAM network upgrade or the second H, uh, the H2 landmark. 66 to 73 villager, uh, uh, economy, economy units. And yeah, that's a mistake Phyllis, he should have you built a few more um, outposts. But you want 3 4 out, you more or less want half your wood income, or more or less all your wood income just into more outposts, outposts, outposts everywhere. And with the stone you get, you get the spring and emplacement, so the enemy can never really attack. So that's a five relic, nah, four relics to one, or to two, because it's a uh, HOE, so still double gold income from relics for Phyllis as Mongols, and Mongols really hard outscale HOE late game. They have the best siege with the uh, extremation of Springles. They have double siege production, also only half cost on siege units because of them because they don't use stone. And, and Mongols want to play range uh, siege, not really much infantry and crossbows or Magudai and HOE can't really deal with either of them. In theory, um, HOE, in, when both at Imperial Age, HOE can play Hand Cannoneer. 
Um, but yeah, for that they need to have access to gold and the problem is I only see them having 8,000 more gold or something like that their side of the map and I have the terrible feeling he can't really contest the other gold on the map especially the gold is really all the gold besides the three gold spawns here are more or less on Phyllis' side, while the food is more on Valis' side. What's quite bad for Valis because he doesn't really need the food because he has two TC since farming eco. He needs gold, while for Phyllis it's the exact opposite, he doesn't really need the gold, he needs the food. So both would be more happy with the other spawn, but... Even with this spawn, I think it's way better. Mongols can deal with stuff like that way better than HAE ever can. Also, Vellis should uh, think maybe of building a market and produce his own, his own traders because I don't think this gold will be enough for the rest of the game. Also, this tower should be gone for quite a, t a time already. <coughs> well, goes for the normal <coughs> goes for the normal army of spearmen, landsknechte, men at arms and a few knights. To be honest, I like horsemen, landsknechte more. If you have the wood income for it, or Knights Landsknechte. I, as a person, I would play Horseman Landsknechte. I think that's a really strong army combo. Your horsemen actually counter the, uh, the crossbows, and to be fair, your uh, an archers if he goes archers, but he won't go archers because he didn't want to stop and produce gold. And Landsknechte deal with melee units and relatively good as well with crossbows. So I would probably put just men at arms, Landsknecht and a horseman instead of knights. In general, I think horse, uh, knights are in feudal age a lot better, and in imperial age they're better than um, horsemen, but I think in, in castle age horsemen are a lot better because you can mess so many of them compared to knights. Um, they don't have so much step difference, to be honest, in Castle Age there. Also in late game when you can more or less have in, in, uh, unlimited resources and stuff like that, of course lenses are better knights. Uh, but especially for HOE, I think horsemen, Landsknecht and men at arms is probably the way go to go. Now this game will be really hard for Phyllis Avelis because now it's Imperial Age and he has a smaller army and he has a weaker army. The only way I see Avelis win this is if he gets his siege up. The problem with that is I don't... Oh, he noticed the too that he doesn't have that much gold left anymore and started this markets. Um, I like that he produces the more markets here because that's a faster way, but I think he can also produce mar uh, traders here. It's not that, uh, it's a little bit less efficient, but more traders is better than less traders, I would say. But yeah, it will be really hard to out mine uh, Phyllis. Also I think that's a small mistake that he only has some villagers of gold. Um, I would put more or less most of my villagers on gold, not because you need the gold, but in fact you want to steal the gold from HOE. If you both play with trade, um, Mongols just hard win. They have 15% better trade from the outposts, 
they have way better trade from Silver Tree, and because they're Mongols, and um, if they get Stone Commerce or later. Why it's Stone Commerce, not longer trade? Uh, oh, that's the pest traffic. But yeah, Stone Commerce is also a lot better. Um, yeah. <laughs> To be fair, HAE has the two best matchups are French and uh, Mongols best ma two matchups are French and HAE. So that was relatively expected. And yeah, now here we have power and placement and stuff like that. And yeah. You never can fight here anymore. That looks more. Also, to be fair, I think Velis hold uh, that a lot better than my games versus his Mongols. But yeah, first mistake was probably not to mass archers. I think massing archers would be quite good. And the second mistake. Uh, he should have placed um, sh um, when you see Silver Tree send one villagers to this market, get towers up here, and send your military down here so you cover both markets. He did a good job to stop, uh, try to stop the trade in the early game, but yeah, now it's really, really hard. Also, Magadai are just so good, especially if you don't, don't get focused. Not the best focus fire, this Landsknecht still is alive, and yeah, now he's dead, nice. Yeah, I think that is probably GG. Well, it has put maybe put use Mass Man at Arms, but what you want to do with Mass Man at Arms, they can't really push. That's the reason why I think Horseman is so important with HOE. If you go Horseman, Landsknecht and Man at Arms, you spend more or less all your resources really well. And in fact you can catch up with armies like that and surround them. And when your horsemen surround then your your Landsknecht can follow up as well, so that's quite good. Oh, holy shit, Mongols double the score. Yeah okay, they have it's on 146 eco and has doubled the military still. So yeah, this game looks pretty much over. Let's see if Vellis is, uh, tries to stay longer. Maybe he just thinks about the next game because I don't really see him coming back from this. Um, I'm thinking Velis will take HOE again, probably. And my guess would be Phyllis will pick China. Also, if I would bet at the moment, I would say Phyllis goes China. Yeah, that's GG just to tall Velis a little bit. He plays his three ways, as I think. Maybe he will also pick a HOE mirror matchup. Yeah. Oh, the gear counts as economic unit. That's interesting. Um. Yeah, that's one death. No, that's not a death. That village is just. Oh, he probably ran out of sheep or something like that. I forgot to produce shortly. Fill his very clean line. He ne Yeah, he has a little dip. I think he double produced here one or two villagers. This line doesn't... Seems a little bit too high. So villager... Here, is this, here he lost the villagers to the spearmen. <clears throat> Second TC is around here, I think, and yeah, here he came back. The Ragnar's Cathedral is, I think, correct, 
but I think if you go to TC HAE, you have to build way more feudal age units and scale slowly into castle age. You can't go fast castle age afterwards, especially not with Mongols because they have a faster castle age than you if you do that. But yeah, to be fair, that, that was quite expected. Counter matchup for Phyllis, Phyllis' best ways, as well as sector third best ways. <coughs> Yeah, that's even with the traders. Military, yeah. Range students with melee units. That's the problem with Mongols. You HE with Mongols in theory HE can win until also HE can win Dark Age, they can win Feudal Age. If they hit Castle Age a lot f faster than Mongols, they can also beat Mongols in Castle Age relatively good because they snowball faster, but if the other way around, uh, Mongols just wall over them. So, I think the right choice would have been to build maybe a Dark Age barracks because actually you can build Dark Age barracks as HRE and just out, uh, outweigh Mongols because, yeah, Mongols have double production, so you only pay 50% for their spearmen in theory, but you get 50% or 45% more income overall, so you actually outscale Mongols with Spearmen, MS Spearmen in Dark Age. Also, the MS Spearmen has the big plus side, you can get tower rushed and Mongols maybe lose a villager even. And when you have two scouts, you can also get the vision on a lot of places, not like I did. I did with French with Mongols a barrack, but my mistake was I didn't send my scout to the enemy barrack, so I can couldn't see if Mongols would use more spearmen. So I had to stop spearmen because I was French, and actually French doesn't win over a long time, and yeah. I think also... Valis tactic would be okay with 2 TC, but then he had to commit for, I think, a heavy feudal age horseman archer push or something like that, or horseman spearman. I think the mistake was he went too fast to castle age, or not the fast enough, so, and yeah, faster is really hard when Mongols after a tower rush, so... Think second TC and then mass army and push on feudal age, take the map control and then you can get 15-60 minutes to castle age relatively slow, but you have map control and probably can still can take two or three relics and if you get two relics, even as HAE you are in relics ahead, so that would be okay. But yeah, it was an interesting game. To be fair, really hard matchup for HE, so that was quite expected. But let's see how it goes in game two. See you guys.